Shop Talk is back with the support of LSETF. We're sat down with some young, brilliant entrepreneurs to learn the secret behind their success so that just maybe we can do the same thing. How are you, Anka? Okay? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm I feel very like people well. always say that. People always respond and be like, I'm good. But it's never like the fullness of it. Like, even if you're <laughs> good, like, what is causing the goodness? I mean, I'm grateful. Maybe I should try that. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be alive. Mm. You know, gratitude in this last, I mean, gratitude every day is a must. But in the last 18 months, you it's know. It's funny, like, everyone has immediately referenced the last 18 months. <laughs> I think that, like, how much, how much has it changed for you? Where do we even start from? <laughs> you know, the last 18 months for me, I guess, like so many other people, has been a time of like reflection, you yeah. know, professionally and also personally. Um, you know, the world has changed. We have changed. I mean, I certainly have changed. So um, I'm just grateful, you know, I'm grateful. I'm more intentional. I'm more yeah. aware. I'm more present. So, um, if anybody should say, oh, how are you? I, I'm good, you know, <laughs> I'm here, which yeah. means I'm good, you know. Um, if you're not here, you can't be good, yeah. right? So now I actually mean it. I'm good, I'm fine, you know, I'm grateful. Awesome, awesome. How did PR start for you? You know, I always say this and people think I'm making it up. So PR was actually something that I fell into. You know, I didn't set out to work in PR. I always said to pe like to people, I wanted to work in the business of music or the business of fashion. But um, I was so young. What I really meant was I wanted to work in the business of the creative yeah. industries. And, you know, my dad was like, you're not going to fashion school. You're not like <laughs> he felt it was too niche. Yeah. Right. So he was like, well, it's not like you're even trying to be a designer or sing. So why don't you go to a business school? Right. Yeah. And then as you go on. And you can then, of course, take that degree and work in different industries. And then I started my degree and I hated it. I started an international mm -hmm. business and management course. I wasn't performing well. I was spending most of my time in my room watching like <laughs> Desperate Housewives. I just wasn't enjoying it, right? Yeah. Because it just had different modules that I didn't really at the time see how it was going to help me yeah. go and work in fashion or even work in music right even though I wanted to work in the business of all the modules I was being taught I was like I don't really see how financial yeah. accounting is gonna get me closer to working yeah. in the creative industry so I just wasn't even giving it my all and then I think I had a moment where I was like okay you know what I need to take charge here um and then I took a year out of uni and I went to work for Bloomberg and I was like, okay, let me try this finance thing and just see. Yeah. And I was there, like, I stood out like a sore thumb, like, <laughs> in the entire office. And I was like, yeah, I'm not really feeling this. I don't think that this is me. When you me. say you stood out like a sore thumb, how do you feel like you stood out? I mean, everybody else, Bloomberg's a financial company, yeah. right? So everybody else that were there were, like, super analytical. They wanted to be there. You know, you could tell that even at the entry level, these guys had their 10 years mapped out yeah. or I want to be head of finance, head of analytics. And for me, I was just like, yeah, I would love to work in a label yeah. or in fashion. Like, what are you doing here? So after six months, I was like, OK, I've tried this. Right. Then I worked at Matches, Matches Fashion yeah. in Mayfair and then started working with Diane von Furstenberg. And it just was dropping me. No, yeah. it was just there that I. <laughs> really saw what it looked like to work yeah. in press or even knew what PR was, right? Because, of course, um, spending my formative years here or my earlier years in Nigeria, PR was not something that you get taught about or you yeah. get told. So was I didn't even really a thing. Right. Yeah. I didn't even know what PR was. I had never even heard what public relations was at yeah. the time. Right. So it was in that environment that I started seeing what press meant and that press was even different from marketing. Yeah. Right. And um, I was like, okay, I really like this. I think this is what I've been trying to articulate, but 
I couldn't. Then I was like, at the time, I was madly in love with Kings of Leon, right? So I was like, you know, I would love to work with Kings. It was so secular. I was like, I would love to <laughs> work with like Kings of Leon and all of that. So I went on, I think it was MySpace or maybe even Twitter. And I started looking for all these bands, all mm. these indie bands that I love. And I was just getting down the names of like the PR agency or even the labels that they were signed for. And I just sat down one day, I was like, started typing. I'd love to come and intern. I'd love to come and intern. Yeah. And I got a couple of responses from like two really big agencies. One was like focused on new artists, which was yeah. like so up my street. And they had like artists that I loved, you know. And then I worked for another agency, NBC, and they looked after like Madonna and like I'll be in the office and like Mark Ronson will come in. I was like, <laughs> it was just love. It was just like life for me. Bear in mind, I was also very young. We were like, 1920 and that was where and being in those environments even though it was fun that was where I got a better understanding of what PR was and what press office was and then I went back to uni this is where it gets dramatic I went back to Birmingham which is where I was at uni I changed my unis without telling my parents like (laughs) don't try this at home. Like, I don't want people that are watching to feel like, yeah, they can just swap things without informing their parents. That was wild for me, right? So I changed unis. I start, um, I just carried on with my degree. I started a media and comms degree and specialized in public relations, right? So I graduated in that. And then on the day of my graduation, of course, my parents flew in from Nigeria. Mm. And I think my dad's lawyer, his son also went to my my initial uni Mm. right so when my dad came to the school he was just confused like he was like this is not there's no way this is not where you were my mom was just like (laughs) they were both confused like why we what are we doing here i was just like yeah well i ended up changing because i wasn't and they were fine you know my parents are like surprisingly they were like really chilled i think for them it was just okay well she's graduated with a degree and i did really really well so they were like there's no reason to start like kicking up a fuss I guess it would have been different if I just didn't graduate at all and then once I finished that I went back to London and then I did a diploma in public affairs and political communications don't ask me why that was the (laughs) Obama time and I was so fascinated with like political communications particularly how they use like celebrities I always say they use like celebrities to win that election I was like I want to know more about this and yeah that's how I fell into PR. So, okay. So you started off with a degree in international business. Yeah. Things like finance and all that. Were yeah. How much would you say that things that you particularly, no, maybe not particularly like, have helped you where you are today? Like, do you see the 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 need for understanding finance and all of that. Man, you definitely do. (laughs) Now, I actually wish I stayed because 10 years after, I'm about to go back to business school. Can you imagine? To like start my MBA. So had I known that those things were going to be useful, I would have maybe paid more attention because, of course, now that I run my own business, I have to sit with the accountant, right? We have to do budgets. We work with clients. We have to make sure that we're in line with the media spend, right? I need to even know what's going on in the company. Are we growing? Are we not growing? Um, Are we spending too much? Are we not spending too much? So to run a business, because to run a business is actually general management. Yeah, It's general management. As a business owner, you have to know everything about everything. Um, Otherwise, you're oblivious, right? I need to know the tax laws in Nigeria. I need to know how they um, affect my clients who are multinationals, um, clients that we take on from outside. How much tax will they have to pay in Nigeria, for example? Legal stuff. I have to know... Like, it's funny because uh, I, I, I think that we don't think, especially when you're in, in creative fields. Right. So people that want to start businesses in creative areas, because I know for myself, one of my mm-hmm, big mm-hmm. things was always, okay, now you've studied acting, that was all well and good, but now you're trying to actually do it professionally. You do need to understand oh, yeah. something. Because now when you're looking for a manager, when you're working with a manager, you need to know that you're being um, represented well. Of course. You know, you're getting the bank for your buck, yeah, or whatever yeah. it is, right? So on, learning to understand that, a business is a business. Of course. Creative or not, like... Uh, it's, it's a, a business. business. Yeah, it is a business. And you have to treat it as such, right? Yeah. Because, yes, even though we're creatives, we need to make money, yeah. right? We need to monetize our gifts and our talent, right? And if you don't have 
at least the foundation understanding of like business, you're not going to be able to yeah. even grow whether it's your brand yeah. or whether it's your company. So even for me with my clients, right? My clients are in the business to make money. So even when I'm like drafting or um, developing their PR or comm strategy, yeah. I have to ask them, the first thing I ask them is, what's your overall business objective? Because yeah. I can't create a campaign that is isolated to their needs. So you might get some clients say, okay, we want to make sure that we, it's, the, the campaign is very sales driven. Yeah. We want to make sure that we get 50 leads. So I have yeah. to say, okay, they need to get this. This is a strategy that's going to go. We, some will say, we need to move X amount of cases. Okay, we need to create a strategy. So I have to understand how their business yeah. actually works to even do my job. How do you know how to, to proportion? Okay, this example I'll give, <laughs> right? You, it's very easy to say that a light costs mm -hmm. 15K, 20K. Right. How do you, um, in a creative space, know how to, what questions are important to ask to know what value to put on what you're providing? First of all, you need to even know, how do you value yourself, yeah. right? So for me, and like, let, let me talk in the context of the agency without sharing too many like trade secrets, right? <laughs> so for us, it's like, I work with an international rate standard, so how is it that they built in the UK? How is it that they built in the US? Yeah. When I moved to the, to Nigeria, a lot of clients didn't understand that. They just understood PR people just to say, we're charging one million naira. But what for, yeah. right? So I bill per time. We all we have like different resources within the agency. So different level of like ex experience and expertise. So of course, an account executive is going to be a lower rate than a senior account director. Yeah. Right. So based on the client's budget, we can say you need 10 hours of account executive time or you need 20 hours of account director time. Because what would happen usually is a client, you might agree a billable rate with the client and you end up using so many hours within the agency yeah. that it doesn't make sense for you financially, right? Or you might just say to yourself, well, I want to take this client on, right? But how do I service them? You know, how is it going to impact all the other clients yeah. that I have. And clients who say, oh, this billable rate, this blended rate structure, we don't understand it. So for me, it's my job to teach them, yeah. right? And say, okay, this is how we build and we're not gonna move, we're not gonna change it for yeah. any reason, yeah. right? And um, that's still how we build, we've had to make it work. Of course, we work with clients and say, hey, okay, this is your budget, this is um, the timesheet, so this is what it would look like so that with your X budget, you're not expecting that the most senior person yeah. is on call for you round the clock yeah. because if you wanted that, you need to be able to pay, pay for, for that, that yeah. time. So that's how we do in the creative industry. So to answer your question, it would be, what is the market rate as well, right? So we need to make sure that, of course, we may not be able to bill the same hourly rates in Nigeria as you do in London, right? Because they always say the overhead's cheaper and clients always find a different excuse <laughs> that, oh, maybe people in London or the US get paid more, right? So you can't charge us the same here. So you need to look at the rate structure for your industry and say, okay, um, my maybe competitors or p my pairs, how are they billing? You know, so that you get an understanding because you also yeah. don't want to price yourself out the market, yeah. right? So you want to make sure that you know what the what the rate market rate is, and then maybe add hundred <laughs> percent. That's why I said to you. Thank you very like, much. I really like that one. Add hundred percent to it. <laughs> Just make sure that you can actually justify the cost. Like, yeah. don't do like a rubbish job and think you can get paid more than everybody. You need yeah. to be able to like command what you what yeah. you earn, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. See, I'm learning. I want to <laughs> double up in terms of business quality. Am I going to have to like <laughs> charge you consultancy fee for this? Um, so you can try. Right. But because the information came before, I was aware of any costs. Yeah. I know you're the one asking the questions, but was this like a bait and switch where you're like, come, come and hang out on my show. And but then, really what you wanted to do was... To learn how to, yeah. I, so this, this I is... I get it. Yeah, I get it. It's smart fine. business strategy. That's smart. That's a smart yeah. move. <laughs> <laughs> so got some experience in, in the UK. Mm -hmm. What was it like? adjusting to Nigeria when you moved to Nigeria and then also going from working 
in companies that did PR to starting your own? Oof. Well, this is like, <laughs> I don't know how much time we've got, but <laughs> when I moved back, and bear in mind, when I moved to the UK, I wasn't coming back and forth. Yeah. So I hadn't been back for like 10, 11 years. And then I came back and everything was so different. So for me, it was also like, it was just a shock. It was just like a yeah. cultural shock and everything else, right? And then I started like job hunting. I realized it wasn't as easy yeah. as it was in the UK to find like PR work or marketing work. So I was like, hey, what am I going to do? Like just trying to find work. And then um, there was an opportunity with the Intercontinental Hotel in yeah. Lagos. Um, and I applied for the job. And I got offered the role uh, as head of PR and marketing. And I was there for like 18 months. And um, of course, the landscape is different. The media yeah. landscape is completely different, right? So I had to also adjust to that. I had to adjust to the cultural nuances uh, because of the things that are acceptable here that maybe are not acceptable. So yes, you have to humble yourself to also understand yeah. the landscape because you know, I couldn't come in like, oh, I have all this experience in the yeah. world. But again, I, at the time, I had no market knowledge, yeah. right? So I had great PR experience, but I didn't understand the local market. Of course, um, clients at the time also used that as a way to pay me less. Yeah. Well, you're new, so you don't really know that much. <laughs> so again, I had to um, prove myself. Bear in mind that even before I got that job, I worked on this festival um, in Lagos. Yeah. And for me, I took on that work and I didn't even, I think I got paid like 200K, almost like a stipend. But it wasn't about the money, it was just, okay, let me just begin to show yeah. what I can do in market. So I did that festival, I met people, I got a better understanding of what PR looks like here. I made some local contacts because to do my job, you have to have local contacts. Yeah. I can't bring the <laughs> journalists from Financial Times in the UK. Yeah. You know, so I had to learn that. So when I was done with that role, whilst I was working in that role, I get a call from one of my bosses in the UK and he was now based in New York. He wanted to, they were running a campaign and they needed me to support and it was a campaign that would cover five African markets. So he calls me and he's like, hey, you're in Nigeria now. Do you want to do this? I was like, great, side hustle. <laughs> How much are you paying? What they were paying me for that campaign was probably more than they were paying me the entire year at the <laughs> hotel. I was like, yeah, I'm in. And I did such a good job, right? And then they gave me a couple more gigs and then another boss who had moved to Dubai as the CEO of like a company that I even interned with calls me and says hey we hear you're in Nigeria now we're looking to come into Nigeria what do you think I was like yeah she's like oh the road's going to be between Dubai and Lagos I was like even better I'm out of here <laughs> and that was how I left the hotel it was great by the way I know he left on such a, a good note you know I did such a great job there I mean I, I think so I think they'll also agree but that was how I then took this role, it gets more dramatic. I took this role and I'm trying to build the company um, in Nigeria, pitching, knocking on yeah. doors, trying to say, hey, this international company is coming into Nigeria. Let us give us your brief. So started making those contacts. And we got a couple of good brands, good brands. And then um, November, I remember this was like a couple of days before like my 29th yeah. birthday. Uh, I'm not that old, by the way. <laughs> I get a call like, oh, come to Dubai and stuff. I was like, this doesn't seem like good news. So I go to Dubai and my boss, who's amazing, by the way, she's like, hey, you know, Global have decided that Nigeria is such a volatile market for us. This is when we just had new CBN mm. laws, repatriation of funds was a nightmare. Mm. It was, the market just was not attractive to investors, especially foreign, foreign investors, investors yeah. you know, and they were like, hey, you know, we loved the idea of coming to Nigeria, but the market's so volatile. So we're going to have to like pull the plug. I've just been 11, <laughs> maybe almost 12 months into this role. Yeah. I was like, man, what am I going to do now? My, it's my, it's, the CEO was like, listen, you were by yourself in Nigeria. You were the one that was like knocking doors, pitching, and even trying to get us into Nigeria. Why don't you just carry on? You know, let's broker a partnership, right? So you still remain under the umbrella of the business, but it's your business. I was like, huh. Oh. I was never thinking of trying to be an entrepreneur. What do I know about yeah. owning my own business? Like, it just wasn't something that, but I had a registered company 
you know, because for me to get paid with that freelance work, I had to register my company. So I'm there a couple of days before my 29th birthday, like now I'm out of a job, um, but I've got this client, but they've not really committed. What do I do? And I was like, okay, let me just, let me just go with it and see what happens, right? I'll just consult or whatever. I didn't even have a business plan. Please, again, don't try this at home. Don't go into a business without having a business plan. I was just like, well, let me just start. Let's go into, let's go into it. And I just went and I just started running. I was running. I was running. I was running. Getting the clients, staffing, getting the clients, staffing. And as you know, did we got, I don't know, we got a um, big client. Yeah, you did. We didn't get like <laughs> startups. Yeah. We got multinational clients, getting the clients staffing, getting the clients, pretending like, maybe I shouldn't like say this on camera, is, pretending right? that we were more than... Oh, no, trust me. This, the, this, the few me. of us this, that this, were this there. This tendency to like start typing and you don't just we, use your name. It's not like, easy, we, we. Yeah, we would love you to... Yeah, trust me, don't you worry. Know, We've we, all done it. The whole collective of us, we, we were just like staffing. And we... We weren't winking it because we're doing good work. If we're winking it, like the clients would be like, hey, what's going on here? But it was stressful, right? Because I'm doing the work of 20 people. I'm trying to lead the staff. I'm developing a business at the same time. I'm servicing clients. I'm trying to bring in new business as well to make sure that we're profitable. I wasn't even trying to break even. We needed to be profitable from year one. So that was how BWR even started. So now couple of things so firstly i mean i'm going to get onto the whole bwo i think i'm mm -hmm. a huge fan of like understanding names and the reason behind the name of a <laughs> brand and everything yeah. right but how important would you say when you're starting especially if you're starting something quote unquote effectively on your own mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, learning how to to bootstrap and do as much by yourself yeah. till you get to a point where you can't because i think a lot of the time people want to um jump to the point where they're, they're glamorous massive glamorous business yeah oh no you can't as an entrepreneur my role i always say to people isn't still glamorous yes we work with a lot of glamorous brands so people just imagine that you have a glamorous life but i have to double up i have to treble up and because at the initial stages of the business it was just a handful of us yeah. right so we're working around the clock um there was nobody that could come in and say oh but i was just hired for this you know, because it was all hands on deck. I remember one of our first big events, right? I was there with, I, my, when my friends came, they were just like, I was sweating. I was lifting barrels. <laughs> I was moving things around. There's no, oh, chill and I hang out. Yeah, no, you act know. like the boss. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> like running around. Like one of the things that my team will say is that I've taught them how to run in heels. Like we put our heels on and we run. There's no, oh, let somebody, we don't give orders. If something needs to be carried, you need like to get it done, it, right? Yeah. If something, if somebody, I when we got one of the first clients that we got, I went to Baloga Market. I was looking for bottles and nobody could find it. And I ended up going to Baloga Market with my uncle to get bottles so we can spray it for like decor. So why didn't I send like 20 people? It's like, if you sometimes you want things done. You need to go in there yeah. and get it done. Plus it's also my name on the door. So yeah. if anything goes wrong, you're going to be held accountable. So you have to decide, are you just trying to be the boss? Are you actually trying to do good work? And I find that also the most effective leaders, some of the best leaders are the ones that lead by example. Yeah. If I can show my team that, hey, we're all working here. Nobody's going to sit down and be telling an intern, go and yeah. get this. Do you know what I mean? Interns in my office are not there to get coffee. I don't want to see that, right? It's like, get them involved because that's how they're going to learn. And I say to the interns when we're hiring them as well, when you're here, if somebody comes into the office, they shouldn't be able to tell the difference between you and a full-timer. Full I need everybody like on their A game, right? And if I was not doing the same if i was just in my office if i was just lounging you know events come yeah. i'm the one that's hanging out with celebrities and stuff they're going to emulate that and they're going to like they're going to do the same and i'm sure you've been i don't yeah. know if you've been to any so, of our events uh, well, so, uh, 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 there's stories behind oh my that gosh. And, um, don't tell I'll, that story of how i never right invite now, you but Jeez. you know <laughs> you you do it you can tell the story if you like but you know 
I was, that's cool. <laughs> you're always like, I, you never <laughs> invite me so to like, your yeah, friends. I'm just trying to help you be more spiritual. I don't want to put you, don't put you in situations and circumstances <laughs> where you're true. around this brand. I'm a that. good friend. That's cool. That's I'm a good cool. friend. I'm a good that's person. Cool. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing you, you talk about, and, and I'm, you know, I'm one as I'm doing these kind of conversations, right. I'm seeing kind of a through line in terms of people when you're building something successful, mm-hmm. right? Is this idea that not necessarily it's not about having employees, but about having a team. Yeah, of right? course. Because um, you talked about how, you know, if there's something to be done, there's no telling someone else to do it. Yeah. And there's no, this is what I was employed for. Um, so I'm only doing what I was employed for. How do you kind of learn to build that culture in a space? You have to lead by example, right? Mate, I've been a driver to like some of my clients. You know, I, <laughs> I've i gone, like one of my clients was sick and I went to the hospital to go and even pick her up and take her home, right? You build relationships, you build this stuff, right? And I guess for me, it's come from like such an early age. You know, I've worked since I was 16. Yeah. My first job was not a glamorous job. I was still telling somebody yesterday that my first job was in a butcher's store. People think she's just making it up. No, I worked in a butcher's store. I was selling meat, right? In the middle of winter. And you know, like the UK butcher shops are like, they're yeah. fridges, right? And my mom will come and she'll feel my hand and they'll be so tough. She was like, we didn't send you to the UK to go and work. But because I've worked in a butcher store at the age of 16, I've worked in stock rooms when I wasn't even on the shop floor. I've just, I've been in the workforce, right? And I've always been part of a team, right? Mm. So because I built that, when I started my business, it wasn't any different for me. There wasn't, oh, now you're the boss. Even if there was anything more, the, the pressure or even the pressure was even greater because I had to make sure that if somebody else wasn't doing what they were supposed to do, I was doing yeah. it at the time when we first started because like I said, it was my name on the door. I also needed to prove that I hadn't taken more than I couldn't I could you can handle. I could handle, right? So I would work seven, seven days a week, pretty much. I was working around the clock, literally around the clock. I was sacrifices also when you're the leader, right? I couldn't make family events. I remember I was supposed to be a bridesmaid and suddenly one of my clients says, hey, we're having an event. I couldn't (laughs) make it, I couldn't make it. And people will say, oh no, I have to go and do this thing. You know, you have to decide. What do you want? What is important to you at the time? So for me at the time, it was building a business because I always say to people, if I wasn't doing PR, even though I fell into it, as soon as I established what I was doing, I knew this is what I wanted to do for as long as I could do it. So it was about, especially in a market like this where I was fundamentally different. You know, I was going into pitches with like, trainers (laughs) trainers <laughs> on and they were like again i'm not yeah. conventional so they were just like this one where does she come from yeah. what does she know so even i was like okay cool just give me that one gig just the one thing let me just show you what yeah. i could do so i had a lot more to even prove yeah. and as soon as soon as i built a culture of hey if you're gonna work with wrongs right listen you need to know what you're getting yourself into mm. There's a lot of work involved. There's no playing. And I tell my team, there's no even enjoying these events. We're not there to enjoy. Yeah. We're there to do the job and work. And then you begin to recruit people. Trust me, we had a very high turnover as well when we started. Of course, people came because they wanted to go to events. They wanted to hang out <laughs> with influencers. <laughs> when they came into the business and saw that the reality was different, of course, they dropped like flies. It's like, yeah. oh, this is not what I signed for. I, I had an event whereby one of the one of the interns, she went home to go and get changed twice. Yeah. And the client saw her and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> get home, changed twice. I'm in jogging bottoms, sweating from head to toe. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, I mean, again, you have to lead by example. Now it's easier. Now it's easier. Now I don't have to go to all the events. Yeah. Now I could take a meeting outside of the country knowing that I have a team that they've learned, they're capable to do it. So it does get easier, yeah. but at least it's, we're now, what, five years in market? It didn't start getting easier till like, not last year because COVID shut everything <laughs> down, but the year before. So we'd been in market for like three years before it started getting easier, before 
we found our rhythm yeah. before people knew what we could do and trusted our work. So it does get easier, but the initial yeah. setup is brutal. Yeah, and, and so how much people need to know about that? Because I think that, you know, we it, generationally, because of things like social media, mm -hmm. when it, there's instant a mentality gratification. of instant gratification. Mm -hmm. um, so people learning to kind of persevere through... Um, through the mud in terms of like when something starts don't expect to be where, where you like at no, the end of the journey don't. immediately of course and um it's so that's so important because you also need to identify your why why are you even doing this yeah. if your why is something very flimsy as soon as it gets tough you're going to be like mm, let me try something else yeah. right for us it was tough oh my gosh it was tough <laughs> when i tell you how tough it was running a business here lack of credit you know the banks the financial institutions are not great with smes yeah. you know you're trying to you're trying to run a business and you don't even have the additional financial support to help yeah. you right um for us sometimes <laughs> the clients don't pay on time yeah. but you still have staff and everybody to pay so what happens in those times where at the age of, bear in mind, I'm still under 30 and stuff, right? Do you think, oh, oh, you know what? This is too hard for me. Let me just go and take an in-house role yeah. where my salary is gar gar guaranteed at the end of the month. And that's what a lot of people do. They just say, let me just do a nine to five, right? But for me and my team, I always ask them and say, listen, we are disruptors, right? We are not, we're professional, but we're not like professionals. Yeah. I always say to them that, listen, you could go into the corporate world and you could do a nine to five and you would just work your way up the career ladder and there's nothing wrong with that. But for us, we change stuff, yeah. right? We change markets, we change the culture. So you can't expect, and when you're, when you're changing stuff, you can't expect for it to be easy, yeah. right? So you need to, you need to, identify your why otherwise when it gets tough and I yeah. have moments where I was like oh you know this is I'm done you know I still have moments where I'm yeah. just like hey and you know this right we've yeah. had conversations where I'm like I, I don't know that I can yeah this this is tough this market is tough this industry is tough and it's lonely it's lonely people look at social media and what they see is like the nice stuff yeah and you know Instagram and social media you create <laughs> what you want people to see. But what people don't know is that as you're posting that picture, it's great at the event, but after you finish that event, it looks amazing. You still have to go back to the client's office where they do a post-mortem pretty much. And it's like, <laughs> that wasn't good. This was good. This was good. So it's not always about the glitz and glam. And there's some times I post that nice picture, but I would just go home and I'm just tired. Yeah. Like I could sleep for like three days. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like there's fatigue, there's all of that. And it's just hard. And being a female entrepreneur, being an entrepreneur as well, no co-founders, no partners, yeah. literally you're by yourself. Oh my God, this, if there's any time in my life that I felt more alone, it's been like during my entrepreneurial journey, yeah. I've had to figure out a lot of stuff by myself, yes, I've now got a couple of great mentors, which I hope we talk about the importance of finding people who can yeah. help you. Now I have people who I'm comfortable with, who I trust in market to say, hey, I'm really struggling. I don't know how much longer I can keep this agency going. Yeah. Like some days I feel like I'm losing my mind. Yeah. And they're like, okay, what is the issue? And they advise me based on their experiences in market. So yeah. yeah. So like BWL, Brands yeah. We Love. Yeah. How did you how did that name come about? With everything in my life, <laughs> <laughs> there's never any like brainstorming moments. <laughs> I was sitting on my dining table, right? Hmm, I don't know if this person even remembers, but Bubu, the designer, was actually in my house. And she sat on the couch. I was in dining, I was trying to figure out names. I need to register my company. And just different names were just popping up. And I just thought, okay, you know, well, what is the essence of what I'm trying to do? You know, just like my university story. Yeah. I'm the sort of person that with everything that I do, I need to be able to know that I give a hundred and a thousand percent. Otherwise, I'll just be restless. You can't pay me a million dollars to take on a client that I don't like. Yeah. 
I just, I just, I just wouldn't, right? And the reason is I'm not going to be able to do a good job and you're going to be disappointed. Mm. So the essence of the company was we only work with brands that we love. Mm. And I think that if you look through our client roster, people will see why. People yeah. will know that it's not just some fancy name or just a cliche. It's the fact that at the heart of what we do, we work with brands that we love. So we get briefs come in and people say, oh, we really hope you can work with us. And I read the brief and say, do I love this brand? Yeah. Okay, maybe I'm not particularly interested. Let's ask the team. I could love music. Somebody in my team could love tech, right? Or somebody could love fashion, right? So as a collective, we need to make sure that we actually love those brands to be able to service them well. Yeah. Because if you're working on, a, let's say, a press release for a brand that you don't love, that press release can take you an entire day yeah. to write because you're not, you don't have the understanding, you yeah. don't particularly enjoy that you brand. You don't connect, you don't connect brand, yeah. right? But if there was a brand that you loved, that you would work on even if they weren't paying you, it'd take you an hour, 20 yeah. minutes, you know, because you flow creatively. And that was how, you know, the name came, the name so came how, about. So how important is it? And both in terms of your company in itself, right, mm. with BWL, but then also with the, brands that you're working with, how important is it for any business to have a strong brand to, um, that is able to relate with you know, its clientele and how important that is in, how important is that in your business being successful? So for us, we look at the client agency relationship. It's a relationship and it's a partnership. So I always say to my clients, we're an extension of your team, right? So we don't come in as the agency. We want to be an extension mm. of your team. So even from the initial meetup, we need to make sure that we're aligned in terms of our values. We are aligned in terms of even the strategy. What are you trying to achieve in market? What are you trying to do? Because sometimes when we get the brief to when we get to the pitch, what they think they want and what they actually want, <laughs> two completely different stuff, yeah. right? So we need to make sure that before we sign on the dotted lines that we actually love this brand and they love us, right? So that you also don't have a hostile agency client environment, right? You don't want to go into the client's office and they just say, oh, they're here. You know, you want to make sure that you're actually, for the longest time, yeah. I had two clients. People actually thought I worked for them. They're like, oh, don't you work for this company? Because I was always in there. Yeah. I was like, I was embedded into their team. And for us, it's also really important because I always say to the clients that it becomes a reputational risk for us. If we take on a client and we can't service them properly. So you might think, oh, I'm just taking it because the money is good. But if you don't do well, they're going to tell other people, oh, we worked with them. They're not that great. They're just hot. Right. Mm. So for us, we need to make sure that on both ends, right, it's actually a relationship that will succeed because we're aligned in terms of our values, in terms of how our ways of working. For me, that's so important. One of the things I say to a client, okay, here, here's our ways of working. So you know, right? The do's and the don'ts, you know, so that there's no disappointment. So that's really important from both sides. Um, yeah, does that, does that answer and what then you're also, saying? I mean, in terms of also like cultivating um, a brand that relates to, I guess, the target mm -hmm, market. Mm -hmm. So how important, let's use Jameson, for example, because you've worked with them and done very good stuff. You've won a Sabre Award, right? Yes. For you, right. We so did. what, how important, what are you trying to do with that in order to actually reach the clientele? Because what, what, what connection is there between the power of the brand mm -hmm. and it actually affecting people's lives? Right. So again, and this is why I would always love like that campaign. I mean, even the team, you know, um, they had a great marketing director who was just one of the best I've ever worked with in market. Super talented, super creative but he listened. He was also a good listener. He was very good at saying, okay, I'm not really from here. What are your thoughts? Great listener. And yeah. then he'll just piece everything together. And in terms of your question, a brand like that, we had to sit down and say, hey, what are the cultural, again, nuances in this market? Who are we trying to speak to? And that, that, that campaign and the entire James thing, thing just blew, oh, it still blows me away, yeah. is the fact that we came into a market, we came in at a time whereby 
again, trying to disrupt what everybody else was doing. You know, the competitors were doing A, we were doing B, risky strategy, because it hadn't been done before. So one of the ways was, okay, their competitors were operating in a very premium way, very flashy way, very, shall I even say, pretentious way, because that was what the market loved at the moment. You know, Nigeria is a champagne and cognac drinking society. Mm. And we love the badge value. We love expensive things, right? We're also a status-seeking society somewhat, right? And then you have a brand that is not as highly placed in terms mm. of pricing come into market how do you get people who love the most expensive stuff to associate with a brand that they could say oh this brand's cheap yeah. we had to reinforce the core value so we had to send a message that said you drink this brand because you're cool the brand doesn't make you cool you know what i'm saying yeah. you you are cool so the brand needs you so we flipped it on their yeah. head versus, oh, if I drink this brand, then it reinforces my well, social yeah, status. Yeah. And then we were like, okay, premium without the pretense. So if everybody else was activating, let's say on the island, we were like, we're going to mainland. It hadn't been done before. I remember the first calls and we were telling people, hey, we're doing this event at the railway compound. People said, there's a railway compound in Lagos. <laughs> Where is it? People were like, we have to come across the bridge. All manners of stuff, right? And that event was... It was, I mean, there was a lot that went wrong. But when people came, I guess the experience, it was just like, oh, wow, this is something new. And even in terms of the influences that we worked on, we were really about culture. You know, so we started identifying. Again, we didn't work with people who were already known in market. We began to mine creatives who didn't mm. at the time even know they were influencers. Yeah. I, I would go out in Lagos and I would see somebody that looked cool really cool i'll be like oh my god let's let's get his number i was like sorry can i get your number and they're just like why i was like don't worry i work for this brand i'll just be honestly what do you do oh, i'm trying to be a designer they're in school whatever but just very ex the way very expressive individuals right they were not trying to fit in i was like, i love that and that's what the brand was about so it was about bringing in those individuals and connecting them with the brand or yeah. even connecting individuals who were influential within their cultural space and working with them and the brand to create something yeah. that was pretty phenomenal, I would say. I mean, you've done great. You've won two Sabre Awards, right? One was for the Jameson. Three Sabres. See, it's just obviously yes. a scene. won three okay. Sabres. And then you've obviously, you've also been Forbes 30 under 30 for... Um, Most, yeah. So won the Sabres for Jameson. Yeah. Um, and then we won the Sabres for Homecoming Festival. Yep. We won the Sabres for Universal Music Group. Yeah, that's the one I didn't know. Really and know. then um, we, and then I, of course, was profiled for 30 most promising African entrepreneurs, yeah. which is great. But let me tell you about, let's talk quickly <laughs> about, let's talk about awards and stuff, right? I want, like, and I'm now talking from experience, and I guess maybe because I've achieved it, I can now maybe not relax, but begin to say it's not about the awards. I honestly thought it was, yeah. right? I had a list of all the stuff I wanted to have won. Between you and I, hopefully the Sabres people are not going to watch this. <laughs> all those awards are in a box. I kid you not. They're all in a box in my mom's garage right now. Because I found that for me, the pressure was getting too much. You know, I was building stuff based off of, okay, with the Sabres or with this in mind. Yeah. So what if there's a year that I don't win the Sabres? Does that mean the work wasn't good? Yeah. You know, I realized that I had started letting those awards and acknowledgement validate yeah. what I did. And we were losing what the agency yeah. stood for. You know, we're an agency that was just like, we were given this opportunity and we ran with it. Yeah. I didn't want all of that changing the culture, you know? I didn't want this Forbes mention or this CNBC mention to start altering yeah. my why. And it, it did, honestly, it started altering my why that I was like, mm -mm, no, if we win it, great. Now they're not even in my office anymore. They're all in a box in my mom's garage because now I've achieved it. I'm like, now I know what I can do. 
but I guess when I also wasn't as sure of myself, those awards validated me. I needed yeah. that global validation. And now I'm just like, okay, now I have it. Now our work has been recognized nationally and globally. Great. But the next phase is not about that for us Can or you for me. Can speak to that? So that aspect, because I think there's a tendency, I guess, like you said, you know, when you focus, especially when a business is starting to grow, mm -hmm. um, to lose focus and actually just giving the quality of a product mm -hmm. as opposed to, um, you know, dressing, you know, a gift horse up and then not really having any content in there. So the importance of focusing on the content, the product, whatever it is that you're, you're giving as, as an entrepreneur, yeah, um, as opposed to the acknowledgement. The yeah. So again, that goes back to your why, you know, I'm sure the people who are, the why is great for them, but the money is better. Yeah. <laughs> the why is great, but the awards and the recognition is great, you know, so you need to understand what sits with your soul. And, you know, we have this conversation for me. I, I went through that phase where I was like trying to figure out what I was going to do and I was handed this gift um which I think I was faithful with um but now in this phase that I'm in it's about okay this talent this gift the work that we do how do we actually want to impact yeah. what kind of impact are we looking for am I looking for an impact that changes the drinking culture yeah great Am I looking for impact that changes behavior? What impact do I want to see? Yeah. And for me, I've had to go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Again, as a business, you always have to do that. You can't say, oh, this is how we started. The way we started five years ago, we shouldn't be doing the same things yeah. now. So for me, I've had to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, great. We love this amazing lifestyle brands and stuff. But I had gotten to that point whereby I needed more. I needed more impact now looked something a little bit different yeah. for me. The sort of clients I wanted to take on, the sort of influence I had, I wanted to have culturally. Um, I wanted to now, I wanted to make sure that, and this is not me trying to be like self-righteous or whatever the case is. I became more conscious about what sort of messaging I was yeah. sending out. I guess I also became more responsible in terms of the sort of maybe brands that I was promoting. Yeah. Um, and really taking a step back to say, how will this product or this brand affect this person's life? You know, so again, as a business, the you cannot lose your whys, you know, because what will happen is you're not authentic anymore. Yeah. You lose that authenticity that you started with that. and people can see it, right? People can see it. I'm sure we haven't always been perfect on perfect fronts. And I'm sure there are people that you might say, oh, what do you think of BW? Oh, man, they're not as great. And that's fine, you know, but as much as I can, as much as I can for me, it's so important. Yeah. It's so important. If I tell you what we've done, one of the, if you ask me, what's the wildest thing that you've done? For me, and I've not told anybody this, is I put a pause on the agency last year and it wasn't because of COVID. COVID, yes, hit. But at that point, I had that point of reflection as well, where I'm like, hey, hang on. And we're getting briefs, yeah. no. And people were like, oh, these people are making too much money. People were calling people to say, oh, can you get wrongs to look at this brief? No, I'm not gonna do it. What's she doing? We don't know, right? What's she doing right now? No, I don't care what that brand is. I've looked at it, I'm not gonna work on it, mm. right? Because it came important it became important for me to move away from certain types of brands and begin to do a different type of work did it hit us financially yes was it the most responsible business decision i don't know i know in five <laughs> years time i can't tell you that right now but did my stuff go hungry or whatever no you know what i'm saying i'm not yeah. crazy um but i was able to say and again that goes back to being authentic is we're not gonna fill the agency with just all manners of clients just to grow, 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 yeah. right? Yes, we may love them, but if we're beginning to, and I felt like, are we losing our essence a little bit? Are we losing our why? And if to me, at that time, beginning of last year, it felt, it felt like that. It was like, this, yeah. isn't, this doesn't feel like the agency that I had in mind. So let's pause. That's also the beauty of being a disruptor. Yeah. I mean, there are different types of entrepreneurs, right? You could have one that's like me. You could have one that's a little bit more careful, you know, 
a little bit more rational. But for me, the way it worked for me, it's about going with, going with your spirit. Yeah. So you've, you've, and now this happened the third time, and I was going to bring it up, and I was going to be like, yeah, you've, you've used the word disruptor two times. Now right. you use it three times. Right? <laughs> so you've used it in terms of your stuff. Right. You've used it in terms of working on a campaign, the Jameson mm-hmm, campaign, mm-hmm. and you've used it just now in terms of um, willingness to kind of say no. How important do you think it is as um, an entrepreneur in whatever space you are to actually be able to disrupt a market if you're going to build success? If you look at some of the most successful brands worldwide, you'd find that they didn't they haven't become successful by doing what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Some of the most successful campaigns always go against the norm and the grain. So when you find that, hey, I can look left, I can look right, somebody seems to be doing something similar, I could tell you that you're probably on the wrong path. Yeah. But if you're there and you're uncomfortable because sometimes you don't really have a reference point. What you're trying to do hasn't been done before, yeah. right? The struggle gets harder. Yeah. And, and that's why I use that word a lot. There wasn't an agency that was in market, as far as I knew, that was trying to build the same culture of, hey, come as you are. Like, sometimes my stuff will come in and someone's got a suit on. Why have you got a suit on? <laughs> and it's like, except you fancy wearing a suit, if you, that's your thing. That's cool. But why have you got a suit on? And they'll just laugh. They want to say that again because they think they have to. I was like, come as you are. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Come as you are. And they're like, really? I'll be like, what are you guys doing? Let's go for lunch. And they're like, like, just not doing stuff that everybody else was doing in market. Yeah. You know, everyone's like, ah, people do stuff. They always enjoy it. But they also work hard. So that that's, a, again, in terms of maybe talent acquisition and stuff. But even in terms of just everything that I do, or everything that we try and do, it's just about going it's not deliberately going against the grain but when you have a vision and you have an idea and if you're really going to be a change agent right you have to go against it like yeah. there's no change needed if you don't have to change something does yeah. that make sense right so for you to be a change agent for you to be a disruptor you're actually either you're changing something most times you're either changing the way people consume content for example you're changing the way people purchase fashion you're changing the way people listen to music you're changing the way people eat out as you're saying that i'm literally you're thinking of things like change, amazon right. you're thinking of iTunes, you're changing the way people Apple. shop yeah you're changing the way people watch yeah. movies and entertainment yeah. good lord i've watched i'm on like netflix sign up amazon prime yeah. sign up all these yeah. Disney Plus sign up these days, they've completely changed the way. I don't know the last time I went out to go and watch a film, right? Yeah. When last did you buy a record? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you might buy vinyl here or there, but they've changed the way we consume music, right? Yeah. Like now, if I lose my phone and I haven't backed it up, all my photos, my memories are gone. Yeah. A lot of my memories are maybe stored on Facebook or stuff like that. They've changed the way we actually even preserve yeah. memories. When you think about Facebook and all of that, Instagram, you don't look at them as preserving memories, right? Because preserving memories for me is my mom's photo album. Yeah. So what if Instagram just crashed tomorrow? The photos that maybe I've deleted on my phone, but is on yeah. Instagram or is on Facebook, they even change the way we preserve memories. So for me, the most successful brands, I'm not saying ethical, you know, the most <laughs> successful brands, you know, the brands that are leading or brands that are changing, changing consumer yeah. behavior, you know, and that's why, again, that's so important to be a disruptor in the market. You can't try and do what everybody else is doing. You could, but are you, is your brand going to be remembered? Is yeah. it going to be memorable? Is it going to change? Probably not. Okay, so what would you say are relevant, I guess, big final three kind of of tips, golden nuggets that you'd give Mm. to people that want to go into business or start a business, things that they need to consider and think about if they're going to have impact? Right. Now that I know better, have a business plan. Have a business plan. Even maybe as you are going along, take the time out to do that business plan because it's all great to have this idea and it could work out it worked out for me but I still had to go to my business plan so once the business started growing I was like okay hey 
I need to sit down. I had more time now to do the housekeeping stuff. Let me get my books in order. Let me get the vision, the plan, numbers, everything. Where do we want to be in five years? Where do we want to go? So if you can get it done, at the initial stages of your business, great. Because you're going to need it when you want to start speaking to investors. Mm. You're going to need that business plan. You're going to need um, to show the numbers. Um, for us, maybe it was slightly easier because we're in the service business. Yeah. But I guess if you were sales or you would be more numbers heavy, for yeah. example. So have your business plan ready just so that you have something to go by. Um, this might sound like a cliche, but boy, you have to be like resilient. <laughs> you need to be resilient because if you can break easily, being an entrepreneur is probably not the right thing for you. You need to be resilient. You're going to get a lot of news, a lot of news. You're going to get a lot of people are not going to, especially when you're trying to do something different. A lot of people are not going to be able to see the vision. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to them. They can't, they can't see it. Right. So you need to be resilient. Um, and I guess going back to what I said, what is your why? If you don't know what your why is, every time you get a no, you're going to be like, oh, maybe they're right. Maybe yeah. I shouldn't do this. Yeah. You know, that's going to be oh, what your mentor is going to come and say, are you sure? Why don't yeah. you go and speak to this company or that company? You might, they, you might end up being steered a completely different way. But if you know your why, you can say, you can actually say no. Like now I say no's. Before, like, are you sure? I, I was beginning to feel like maybe I'm overdoing this mm. thing. Maybe I'm doing overdoing this new thing. I mean, should we just take them on? Everybody else is like, just take them and take the money. I'm like, no, mm. no. So, and because I can say no, because I still know my why. You know, I can still say no. And I can say, hey, let's take a break. Let's see what is the next phase. What does it look like? Um, again, Maybe successful business owners, um, people who have been there before us might say, why are you going to do that? That mm. makes no sense at all. But again, when you're trying to build something that's not been done before, you have to be willing to do things that other people haven't yeah. done before. And I guess the final one I'll say is like, have fun with it. Mm. You know, my first three years, now that I look at it, I wasn't really having fun because I just wanted to prove myself. I wanted yeah. to prove myself to the clients and prove myself to myself. I wanted to prove myself. So I wasn't have fun with it. I was just working, 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 working. Um, so have fun and just take the time out to tell yourself that you're doing well. Like remind yourself, celebrate the simple wins, right? Because it's so easy to be like, what's next? I won my first saber, th the next one. Oh, yeah. the third one. Is this campaign going to win one? No, just say, okay, we want something. We're acknowledged for something. Let's take a break. Let's have fun. Let's just, let's have fun. Have fun with yeah. it. That would be my, I mean, golden nuggets, <laughs> I guess. They're not so golden. I'm sure you've heard it a million and one times. Yeah, but I think it's important <laughs> to see it. Um, it it's very easy because I think we do. We hear people say it all the time. And then you're like, I roll. But then there's, it is an importance to practicality. Right. Actually, seeing people that have walked it out and knowing that you're this, right. this right. works. And I think also it's a form of encouragement, right? Because, like you said, if you're trying to be a disruptor, you've got to have like a level of boldness to be, to be able mad. to chase. You've got to be it. mad. <laughs> so, like, you've got to be like, <laughs> like the <laughs> some. When I look at like some of the best minds, man, I was like, you know, to be a creative as well and to come up with the mm. most insane brands or some days I sit down and I'm like Walt Disney. Yeah. Walt Disney is an idea of good madness, right? Yeah. Because you see the characters and you're like, if you're aware about what you're actually watching yeah. or whatever, you're like somebody sat down and built and this out. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> this person, do you understand? This yeah. person sat down and said, this is what I'm going to do with my time. Yeah. Imagine how many people would have walked around and was like, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you wasting your time yeah. for, right? Or somebody says, I'm going to create this social media app. And everyone's like, wait, yeah. what? So you actually have to let your imagination yeah. run wild. Let it, let it go. Yeah. That's it. Thank you so much, Runks. Welcome. <laughs>